Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you cordially on this beautiful ceremonial, but a pretty unusual day. 1st of October is a day when hundreds of young, smiling and smart-dressed people enter buildings of universities. Together with you, more than 600 students start every year the education in one of six disciplines that are taught at the Faculty of Automation, Electronic and Computer Sciences that you have chosen. The building should be then be noisy. All our students should be here. Unfortunately, corridors of the faculty building are only filled with traumatic and painful silence. When you look around this modern, beautiful lecture hall, where I am now, you can see that only representatives of the student self-governing body are present here. Look, your colleagues greet you cordially, they are waving to you and wish you all the best in the incoming academic year. Unfortunately, the board of deans is not with us, nor representatives of the professor staff. As usual time, you would be smart dressed, professor would wear the ceremony gowns. But today's situation is at unprecedented in the 56 years long history of the faculty. You are very sad, mostly because of the fact that you are not let uh, to sing Gauda Musigito in this hall. You won't hear your old statement pronounced by you. You are really sad, but you strongly believe that such circumstances shall never repeat again. We meet on the day when the academic year begins, but we meet only mortally. But regardless of that, or even because of that, we want to provide you as much information about our faculty as possible. We shall start from the speech of the Dean of the Faculty, Professor Dariusz Kania. Then you will learn a few details about the history of the uh, Silesian University of Technology and specifically this faculty, and you will also also be informed how your education activities shall be arranged. Then I will hand you over to good hands of our self-governing body of students and its members shall share with you with the information about the rules that are in place at the Sage University of Technology, what terms and conditions must be fulfilled to be promoted to the subsequent term. I deeply believe that your colleagues shall share with their secrets what to do to survive, even under the toughest circumstances that may all always happen to every student. Our meeting shall end up with a short presentation about rules of ethics that are mandatory at the Salesian University of Technology. Let me to say goodbye to you for a moment. Also, representatives of Cell Governing Board say you see you later to you. Now I am leaving this lecture hall and head my steps to the office of the faculty dean to give floor to him. Let me welcome you to the Faculty of Automation, Electronics and Computer Sciences. We have arranged our meeting in a pretty untypical way, which certainly may trigger your anxiety. Please believe that I even share that feeling, since it is the first time ever that I address my welcome speech to young students as a dean of this faculty, and I am doing it in a really difficult time. What is the reason of your anxiety? You may feel afraid how the things shall go, shall I cope with the difficulties, or did I make a good choice? I really feel competent to calm you down. I have no doubts that you arrived to a perfect place and you have chosen the right faculty for your studies. You will learn things that, are, that shall guarantee you, you good and interesting jobs in future. For some time, both local and global industries have been seeking for much more graduators of our faculty than the number of engineers that we can provide. I hope that this hard time, difficult for all of us, shall pass very quickly and we shall be able to meet face to face, establish more personal relationships and collaborate in fruitful way. You are going to face one of the most beautiful periods of your life. Make good use of that time, which is definitely associated with multiple choices, decisions for your whole lifetime. I wish you good luck and wisdom in all your endeavors. I'm sure that at our faculty you will find perfect teachers who will share their knowledge and experience with you to let you become brilliant engineers. I also hope that you will meet persons who shall be your tutors and benchmarks and uh, who will help you to become better and better humans in your life. 
All the best. Good luck. Good morning. My name is Darwin Mrozek. I am the Dean Deputy for Cooperation Development. My job consists in coordination of cooperation with industry enterprises, take care of development of our faculty departments, and haste cooperation with scientific organizations and various student bodies. Now I will present a brief history and a handful of information related to the Technical University and, in particular, to our faculty. The Silesian University of Technology was established in 1945 and on 29th October 1945 the first inauguration of the academic year was celebrated. At the time our university was made up of four faculties, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, chemical engineering and civil engineering. On the photos you can see buildings of these faculties. At that time, some of them were under construction, and now we can admire them walking down the main avenue of the university campus. At that time, the team of professors was mostly made up of professors from the Technical University of Lwów and Jan Kazimierz University of Lwów. One of such outstanding persons was Professor Stanisław Frize, former head of the Chair of Electronic Engineering at the Technical University of Lwów, who was forced to leave Lwów in June 1946 and arrived to Gliwice. He was nominated as a professor of the Silesian University of Technology and the head of the Chair of Electronic Engineering Fundamentals. Until 1948, he was also a dean of the Faculty of Electronic Engineering. Professor Fraser was famous for really breathtaking lectures when he demonstrated a very interesting phenomena using various interesting requisites. Our faculty was established in 1964 on grounds of the regulation issued by the Minister of Higher Education at the first self-sufficient Faculty of Automation in Poland, but the faculty was set up by a group of scientists employed by the time at Faculty of Electrical Engineering. In 1967, construction of the new building for the Faculty of Automation was initiated. It is the building where you can learn nowadays. In 1971, our faculty was renamed to the Faculty of Automation and Computer Sciences and since 1984 it has been operating as the Faculty of Automation, Electronics and Computer Sciences. Nowadays, this Silesian University of Technology includes 13 faculties, two independent institutes, one college and three teaching centers. Lectures are delivered by more than 500 professors and education is provided to only 20,000 students of all faculties. Now we are on the verge of the 76th academic year. This year we celebrated the 75th anniversary for Foundation of our university. Since 1945, more than 190,000 engineers have been graduated from the university. Today candidates may select one of 60 teaching programs with about 200 specialized variations. The campus of our university found its location on banks of the Kłodnica River. Most of faculties is located right in our campus in Gliwice. Faculties occupy various buildings. Some of these buildings are historical monuments, other ones are really modern. We have university buildings in other towns, such as Zabrzo, Katowice, but our major campus is located right here in the town of Gliwice. Our faculty, that not long ago celebrated the 50th anniversary of its foundation, will soon celebrate its 60th anniversary of operation. In the past it was the first faculty of automation all over the country and now it is rated among the best faculties in Poland. It is confirmed by highly appreciating grades granted by bodies that evaluate the level of scientific output and technical activities. Such courses as automation and robotics as well as electronic telecommunication were awarded the accreditation certificate of honor, whilst in the last year the macro faculty was awarded the European Accreditation of Engineering Programs. 
Usually, we are also noticed in leading position in domestic rankings, such as the ranking of academic school or compared the perspective with Jura. The mission of our faculty is to provide education for top-level experts in line with the needs of the labor market. It is why syllabuses of teaching courses, including uh, the state of the art achievements of technologies, and are consulted with potential employers during various meetings, such as the Forum of Employers. Our faculty employs 27 chartered professors, more than 50 scientists with the title of Doctor of Science and 140 uh, 64 philosophy doctors. The faculty is entitled to grant PhD and Master of Science titles in various disciplines of engineering and technology, first and foremost in automation, electronic and electric engineering, but also in the technology of computer science and telecommunication. More than 3,000 students are taught every year at the faculty, as well as about 200 PhD students. Annually, about 800 graduates receive their diplomas of engineers or masters of science. Our faculty offer teaching programs for engineers that take three and a half years, as well as master of science programs that are 18 months long for the following specializations. Automation robotics, biotechnologies, electronic communication, computer science, also in English, computer science and telecommunication, as well for the macro faculty, automatic control robotics, electronics and data sciences, uh, where all subjects are taught in English. We own excellent teaching facilities, fabulous and modern lecture halls, that can host several hundred of students, modern laboratories, for instance, the Laboratory of Virtual Aviation, Laboratory of Electronics furnished by the Aptive Company, the Laboratory of Industrial Controllers. Some of these laboratories are sponsored by our industrial partners from related sectors, some of them are really renowned brands, for instance, Future Processing, Mental Graphing, or Automation. Recently, we also launched laboratories furnished by such companies as Active and Bombardier. Our collaboration with industrial partners run really smoothly. We arrange joint topics for uh, engineers and masters of science diplomas for our students. Our partners offer practical apprenticeship for our students during holidays, as well as traineeship programs for students during final terms of their education. Our faculty also actively participates in the program of international exchange between academic centers Erasmus Plus. Every year, several dozen of our students get a scholarship from the Erasmus Plus program and leave uh, for six months or a year to have foreign universities. The faculty cooperates with more than 50 European universities from nearly all European countries. Unfortunately, the coronavirus pandemic of this year prevented from traveling for such scholarships, but nevertheless, we hope to reestablish the tradition during further years. The Salish University of Technology and our faculty support young people to develop their passions. More than 180 scientific groups run the activities at the university. Their members construct ball leaders, electric motorcycles, develop robots, drones, or Mars off-road vehicles. That passion to science brings effects. Students successfully participate in domestic international competitions. For instance, the scientific group, Salish and Power of uh, High Flyers. Here on the picture, you can see members of the High Flyer Scientific Group who participated in various uh, competitions for unmanned aerial vehicles and, in turn, here are members of the Salesian Green Power team who built vehicles with electric drive, participate in various competitions and win numerous awards for leading locates for instance, in the competition organized on Silverstone Racing Circuit, where Formula One races are organized as well. Academic life is not only filled with learning and work, it is also students' cultural life. The life is arranged by the Center of Student Culture Morovisco, where various cultural events take place. The mostly awaited event is always the Juvenalia 
od sali Universal Technology called Igry with a tradition that dates back to 1957. This year, the coronavirus pandemic ruined nearly the plans of students, but despite all the obstacles, they could stand up to the task and arrange the event in the online mode. Everyday programs with participation of interesting guests were arranged and broadcast online. Thank you for your attention. I hope that education at our faculty shall become your lifetime adventure that shall open many doors to your future professional careers. Dear freshmen, likewise to other members of the Dean Collegium at our faculty, uh, I would like to express my happiness that you have selected our university and particular uh, faculty and we shall spend together in coming years to recall in your minds what you have already learned and to study new things or even discover solutions of problems that have not been resolved yet. Being a dean for infrastructure and organization issues, I feel obliged to address a few words to you with respect to organization of the academic year under such uncommon circumstances of a global pandemic. First and foremost, I would like to let you know that according to the regulation issued by the His Magnificent Rector of the University, all lectures shall be de delivered in the remote or off-site mode. I really regret that you shall not be able to meet face to face, but anxiety about your safety is always the highest priority for us. Lectures in the off-site mode can be delivered in any of three manners. Most of lecturers shall probably select the form that is referred to the uh, synchronous mode or online mode that shall consist in inviting you to common meetings with the use of popular web communication tools such as Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Such invitations are usually uploaded to a platform of remote education, PZE, when you will have enrolled uh, to specific subjects appropriate to your syllabus. Each lecture, after being delivered, should be also available on the PCE platform in the form of a multimedia presentation or just audiovisual record at least to the end of the specific term. Another popular form is the asynchronous or offline mode. It means that a lecturer records uh, his lecture beforehand and uploads a link to those records to the PZE platform. If so, the lecturer should be available for your possible questions during the entire time slot when the lecture is provided in your timetable. Specific details should be agreed upon with the presenting students for the entire course. The last uh, approach is the online broadcast that can be transmitted from any lecturing hall. Links for such broadcasts, as well as audio and video records, shall be made available to you by means of the PCA platform. Due to extreme care to your safety, many other tutorials and laboratories shall be also arranged in the remote manner, mostly in the form of online meetings on the Zoom or Microsoft Teams platform. It is uh, the way how some tutorials and laboratory exercises shall be arranged. In some cases, the combined mode shall be used with some online meetings, whereas other meetings shall be arranged on site at our laboratory rooms. All relevant information shall be available on the PC platform. We sincerely hope that such an unusual organization of your courses shall not compromise the content-related merit of these courses and, regardless to all obstacles, shall enable you to socialize and integrate with the environment of our campus so that you feel real students. Let me make here a little remark about the PCA platform of our university. The platform can be found at the address uh, platforma.pols.pl and as the name says, it is a central hub of the remote learning system implemented our organization. It was already in place even before the epidemic, but nowadays has gained even more importance. Each faculty of our university has its own location on the PCA platform and the links to this location can be found on the home page of the platform. Depending on the number of teaching schemes and courses some faculties 
For instance, our faculty has several servers that can be easily found when you start navigation from the home page. Each single tab on the platform is distinguished with the name of the subject and even you are subject associated with a teaching syllabus. When you know the name of the subject, you can also find it by means of an embedded search engine. The benefit from all functionalities of the PC platform, you first have to set up an individual account for your own. Please remember that some subjects are password protected and these passwords shall be disclosed to you by your tutors or lecturers during your first meeting. Since currently our subjects are generally taught in remote mode, the list of subjects you have to enroll, as well as password, if any, shall be emailed to you to addresses in the domain student.pols.pl. Please remember to regularly check emails at these addresses. Under links to individual subjects, you will find tabs with various supplementary materials, for instance, slides for lectures, instruction manuals for laboratories, supplementary notes for Tutorials, etc. Each subject has also a forum of activities where various notes related to the subject can be published, including invitation to online meeting on Zoom or Teams platforms. Each note published on that forum is also emailed to your individual addresses. The PCA platform offers also a number of other functionalities, for instance, organization of tests and exams in the form of questionnaires and quizzes, collection of your essays and laboratory reports as well as keeping of a school register. For the current circumstances, you will quickly learn that both teaching and attending lectures or classes without the use of the PC platform is nearly impossible. Now I would like to tell you a few words about our method of teaching courses and aggregation for some subjects. For many of you, such an approach shall be similar to the learning method you already have encountered at secondary high schools, for other ones it will be something new. We made the decision to implement such an organization of teaching since it enables us to get better adapted to sanitary requirements related to the epidemic circumstances. Over the passing years, all teaching, regardless of the form, lectures, classes, tutors, or laboratories, used to be structured into basic units covering two lesson hours, in means 90 minutes. Such units were separated by short breaks to enable a quick meal or displacement to another classroom or lecture hall, and subsequent teaching could start. The timetable might uh, of such units was published at the beginning of each term and was valid during the entire term. Currently, only a few subjects should be taught in that way, for instance, tutorials of foreign languages, mathematics or physics. Usually, such subjects shall be taught in the remote off-site mode. In case of on-site learning, also referred to as contact ones, we would like to prevent you from changing your learning facilities after each 90 minutes. Walking down corridors associated with our displacements entails a risk to meet groups of other persons, which increases the risk of infection. In addition, each room must be disinfected before you enter therein. It needs time and assets, both chemicals and human resources. It is why we implemented aggregation of teaching units, which means that duration of individual teaching units shall be longer. As you can easily guess, single teaching units are longer and in consequence subjects should be scheduled to a less number of weeks, since the total number of teaching hours for each subject is fixed. Aggregation of teaching shall consist in this approach that subjects shall not be scheduled to 15 weeks of the term, as usually used to be, but two weeks in case of subject with less number of teaching hours, or 10 weeks for subject with more teaching hours. One can say that each term is split into three times slot and each slot shall be five weeks long and shall have a slightly different timetable. In each time slot you will have to cope with less diversity of subjects, which shall help you to focus your attention on these ones that are currently on schedule. For instance, if nine subjects is assigned to a specific term, only four or five of them shall be taught during a single time slot.
Now it is time to clarify how the subject accredited. For sure, we are keen on to know whether it is possible to get credit for a sub subject that ends after the first time slot as early as the beginning of November and to get rid of it. I mentioned the beginning of November because the first five week long time slot ends this year on 8th November. Obviously, yes. You can get a credit much before the term ends. All lecturers shall arrange an opportunity to get a credit even during the last week of the specific term. Uh, similarly, in the second time slot, it shall make it possible to split your test credit to three portion. However, if you fail the first attempt to get a credit, you will still have a regular examination session when the taking of your test and exam shall still be possible to the maximum limit of attempts. However, I do not wish to you any of you. I would also would like to make you familiar with the rules that are in place in connection with the COVID-19 epidemic that nowadays is our major concern. Firstly, you are allowed to enter the faculty building and to stay inside only with a face mask. Since face shields are much less effective, I can't ask not to use them unless you have any medical or health excuse. You will be allowed to take your masks off only upon permission of a tutor, provided that the required distance to other persons is maintained. Secondly, everyone who enters the building must undergo the measurement of the body temperature by means of a contactless thermometer or a similar device. No person with elevated temperature shall be allowed to enter the building. Such individuals shall be recommended to contact a doctor. At some location of the building, only one way communication path shall be arranged, clearly marked with sign on floors. Please follow these signs. We also ask to maintain a social distance in corridor, in our minibars or outside the building. Please mitigate your time of staying inside the building to the time of on-site learning and possible breaks between teaching units. As I already mentioned, all laboratory rooms shall be disinfected for you. We provide containers with disinfecting liquids in teaching rooms and lecture halls. Please use them as needed. In laboratories with plenty of equipment and disinfection of each difficult, we recommend to wear disposable protecting gloves. Please do together everything to minimize the risk of getting sick. To the end, I would like to wish you to be successful in learning and to get the best marks. Good luck. Hi, I'm Maciek and I'm the head of the board of the governing board of our faculty. Hi, my name is Victoria and I'm the deputy for Maciek. We are very glad to host you here today. We would like to share with you with a fistful of useful information the secrets of learning. But we shall provide a separate training on the rights and obligations of students. If you have any questions or doubts, you can find us on Facebook as the self-governing body of the AE and Faculty of Stelvini University of Technology, or you can email to us at to the address srsw.aaii.gmail.com. See you at trainings. I agree to again. According to our previous information, we are about to finish our meeting with a brief information about ethic rules that are observed at the Salesian University of Technology. As you can see, the training is within the frame of the ethics in the, the teaching process. So let's first explain what the system is. The system of uh, quality assurance for education is a detailed description of rules, guidelines and the behavior standards applicable to all education process and covering all aspects of the same, including teaching, verification of knowledge, monitoring of the education process, as well as rules for ethics. As you can see, this system covers both students and teachers. In details, it governs such how teaching should be carried out, how we can verify your knowledge, when and in which way you can assess and give grades to your teachers. The system details supreme rules expressed in the Education Code for the CBS University of Technology. Using this opportunity, I would like to encourage you to get familiar with that code that is available at the website of our university. I will mention 
the supreme legislative documents that governs operation of all universities. The most important legal act that regulates operation of universities is the act called Law on Higher Education, and secondarily, regulations issued by the Ministry of Science and Higher Education for the specific case, the regulation related to disciplinary procedures um, towards students. We shall start from a brief information related to requirements imposed to university teachers. Let me quote the procedure literally. When any information is available that any material or financial advantage was received by a tutor in return for a passing result of a credit or an exam, or that another deed offending duties of dignity of a university teacher was committed, the, the head of a relevant organization unit, in uh, your case it is a dean, shall advise the rector about such effect, and the rector shall take a decision with the frames established by the law on higher education. Ladies and gentlemen, such incidents mentioned above has never taken place in our, at our faculty, and I cannot imagine that it would may happen to you. Also, other offending incidents do not never take place as discrimination attitude to a specific group of students, disrespect or derision. However, if you are in position that you encounter a misbehavior of your teacher or tutor, you may advise your self-governing board of students to contact your dean to undertake subsequent steps. Now let me say what we expect from you. First and foremost, we shall never accept any non-independent or non-unaided work of students during tests or exams, as well as use of non-permitted materials or paperwork. As a consequence, your attempt shall be deemed as failed for this specific date, but effects can be even worse, um, which shall be explained in a moment. When a student submits an outcome of his alleged own work, um, engineering project, laboratory report presentation, and that work includes any content that is illegally copied from other sources, such an outcome shall be retained with an annotation about an unethical behavior. Automatically, such an outcome is credited as failed, and a new deadline for independent development of the work established. When misbehavior of the student is drastically as understood the scope of misuse or uh, repeated um, uh, fault, um, the head of the uh, organization is advised, is the dean, and uh, um, such a manager hands the information over to the rector for disciplinary procedures. When we move to even more serious issues. When a student uses a third person to substitute himself during a credit test or an exam or submit a graduation project, BSc, MSc, engineering diploma project, that contains fragments of other students with no reference to actual sources, the relevant teacher advises about the fact his supervising manager of the basic organization unit, a rector, um, pers uh, acts pursuant to the procedure set for the law on higher education, either to sentence the punishment of approach or hands over the case to the peer tribunal, or um, and it is the path that can be uh, implemented uh, for a repeated or very serious breach. Uh, unfortunately, the last year some cases happened at our faculty when the case of the student was submitted to the disciplinary board for students. The aforementioned obligation to quote citation with references to original sources results directly from the intellectual property rights, copyrights, and citation laws. In particular, it is allowed to include a small portion of a third party outcome, already published studies, or even entire small studies with no need to get a permission of original authors and without any remuneration payable to third authors. Uh, when is it allowed to do so? The quotation is must be recognizable and clear marked. It must be clear which words are quoted. In addition, use of citation must be justified and the citation itself can be used merely as supplementary information. Domination is not allowed. 
Although the maximum possible size is not limited, the proportions between the citations that are studied must be kept reasonable so that the supplementary role of the citation is maintained. Obviously, it is mandatory to provide surname and name of the original author and the study where the citation is sourced from. Improper citation may lead to a situation that you will be accused for plagiarism. Plagiarism is understood as the presence of another work, uh, thought, ideas, uh, and presentation as uh, its own. It can be both uh, image, photography, or invention, discovery, song, uh, poem, invention. I think in your case it's very important since it may refer to your diplomas, engineering diploma or master of science thesis. You must be aware that it may refer to a scientific publication. The problem related to plagiarism shall be uh, essential topics for further years of education, in particular before you embark on your diploma thesis. I only wish to mention that consequences of plagiarism are really serious. In particular, an offender can be held liable under regulation of criminal civil law, a fine, a sentence of a custody or imprisonment up to three years, a claim for financial reimbursement, invalidation of a professional title. And here a very sad commentary that a case when the professional title of engineers was invalidated has already taken place at our university and I really hope that such a case will never happen again. It was the last issue to be addressed in the presentation just to finish the outline of key rules of ethics that are mandatory for students. Thank you for your attention and see you at the lectures and classes.